now this is one of the most common birth injury which we will encounter and what is the importance is that it is benign in nature and no intervention is required okay so that is what we will have to counsel the parents now coming to the definition if we read this definition word by word and understand it properly you can write any answer or you can answer to any of the questions in your viva verse easily okay so it is a diffuse edematous swelling okay diffuse edematous in nature occurring in the subcutaneous plane so if it is occurring in the subcutaneous plane of the scalp it has to be extra periosteal and why does it happen it happens because of the fluid collection caused by pressure during delivery okay so i'll read it out once again it's a diffuse edematous swelling which is subcutaneous as it is subcutaneous it has to be extra periosteal and it is caused by fluid collection because of the pressure that is exerted during the delivery okay so now if we look at the swelling over here if you look at this image it is a boggy swelling okay the edges are diffuse in nature it crosses the suture line okay and it is most commonly located over the vertex as that is the most common presenting part and maximum size occurs at birth and it resolves spontaneously over several days okay so as it resolves spontaneously without any sequelae no intervention is required we'll just have to counsel the parents regarding it is its benign nature and a very rare complication of this is scalp necrosis and as already described it is diffuse in nature the borders but in case it is well demarcated it happens during vacuum delivery and it is called as vacuum caput okay now salient features to differentiate it from cephalohematoma is and what is the importance to differentiate it from cephalohematoma is cephalohematoma might undergo neonatal jaundice and it might need treatment okay so caput it is more common in incidence it occurs in subcutaneous plane it is maximum at the time of presentation it has maximum size and it resolves okay spontaneously over 2 to 3 days it is diffuse in nature crosses the suture line and it is not associated with any other underlying skull fracture so that